What? Oh! Oh no! Since its release in 2008, Cloverfield has left an indelible mark on monster movie culture, introducing a creature whose origin remains a source of debate and theories. Directed by Matt Reeves and produced by J.J. Abrams, the film broke new ground by combining the kaiju genre with the found footage technique, creating an atmosphere of chaos and terror in the streets of New York as viewers witness the destruction through the eyes of ordinary citizens. But what exactly is the Cloverfield monster? In this video, we will explore the origins, biology, theories, and secrets behind this creature. Go, 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 go! The Cloverfield Monster, also known as Clover by fans and the production team, is a colossal amphibious creature that emerged from the Atlantic Ocean and attacked New York, destroying everything in its path. In the film, the characters are completely overwhelmed by the chaos as they try to survive in the midst of an apocalyptic situation that no one fully understands. This approach, using a found footage technique, helps create a feeling of uncertainty for the audience who, like the characters, have no idea where the monster came from or what its purpose is. Throughout the film we see Clover causing massive destruction, but one of the biggest mysteries is its origin. Over the course of this video, we will unravel that mystery, relying on information revealed in the film as well as through marketing campaigns and other media, such as the Cloverfield Kishin manga. Yeah, I will. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I will. Okay, yeah, all right. When Cloverfield premiered in 2008, one of the main questions that arose was, where did this creature come from? For a long time, fans speculated that the monster was extraterrestrial, especially because, at the end of the film, in a flashback scene, Rob and Beth are seen on a date at Coney Island. In the background, a mysterious object falls into the ocean. This scene led many to believe that the object could be the monster's egg or even the monster itself falling to Earth. However, J.J. Abrams clarified that the object was not the creature, but a Japanese satellite named Chimpanz-3, which crashed into the ocean. This satellite was part of a Japanese government project and was linked to the Tagruato Corporation, which played a key role in the events that led to Clover's appearance in New York. It's not clear why the oil rig was the target of this vicious attack. The final extraordinary clip clearly shows the sheer species. To fully understand Clover's origins, it's necessary to delve into Cloverfield's viral marketing campaign, which was released alongside the film. This type of campaign wasn't new, but what made Cloverfield special was how it offered key pieces of the puzzle about the monster's backstory and its connection to the mysterious fictitious corporation. Tagruato is a Japanese megacorporation that, in its quest for resources and power, discovered a strange substance at the bottom of the ocean called seabed nectar. This substance not only had nutritious properties, but also had the ability to stimulate incredible cellular growth and improve the vitality of any organism that consumed it. Cloverfield reveals that Tagruato's subsidiary, Slusho, used this nectar as the secret ingredient in its popular frozen drinks, creating a direct connection between the creature and the corporation. Tagruato built a drilling platform called Chow Station in the Atlantic Ocean, not far from the coast of New York, to extract seabed nectar. However, during its operations, the company's marine biologist discovered something unexpected, a giant creature in a state of hibernation, possibly for thousands of years. Rather than alert the public to this discovery, Tagruato attempted to study the creature in secret. But these studies did not go as planned, and the platform was destroyed when the creature, Clover, was accidentally awakened. It's impossible to find out what will happen from now on, but the human has to be prepared for this event. Oh my god, they hit it! They just hit it right now! One of the most fascinating aspects of Cloverfield is the monster's impressive design, conceived by renowned concept artist Neville Page. Clover is a gigantic quadrupedal creature whose size defies logic, but despite its enormous bulk, it is surprisingly agile and fast. The creature is estimated to stand between 311 and 348 feet tall, depending on its posture, and has an approximate length of 1200 feet making it one of the most colossal monsters ever seen in film, though not the largest. With an estimated weight of around 5,800 tons, 
Clover is an unstoppable force that leaves a trail of destruction in its wake. The creature has pale grey skin, a common trait of animals that live in the deep ocean where sunlight does not reach. This skin is incredibly resilient and able to withstand missile, bullet, and bomb attacks, making it extremely difficult to defeat. Clover's resilience comes from its adaptation to the extreme pressures of the deep ocean, which also grants it remarkable physical strength on the surface. Clover has an irregularly shaped head with features resembling those of a piranha or abyssal fish. It has two large black eyes and membranous sacs behind them that expand and contract. These sacs, according to some theories, may be modified gills that allow it to breathe both in water and on land, or they could be organs that help the creature adapt to pressure changes. One of Clover's most unsettling characteristics is its two external esophagus, which hang between its front legs. These esophagus are not only responsible for digestion, but also act as tentacles that the creature uses to capture smaller prey, including humans. The esophagus have teeth inside them, allowing them to trap and dismember their victims in a brutal manner. In the Cloverfield Kishin manga, these esophagus are described in more detail, showing that they have internal tubes capable of immobilizing prey before consuming them. This feature makes Clover even more terrifying, as it can not only crush buildings and destroy everything in its path, but also feed directly on the people it encounters. I don't feel so good. In addition to the creature itself, Clover brings with it another threat, the parasites that live on its skin. These parasites, also known as human scale parasites or HSP, are dog-sized creatures that detach from clover and attack humans. These creatures have a total of 10 legs, 6 double-jointed spider-like legs, and 4 additional crab-like pincers. Clover's parasites are extremely dangerous due to their toxic bite. When they bite a human, they inject a toxic substance that causes rapid swelling, followed by a violent explosion of the body. This is graphically depicted in the film when Marlena, one of the main characters, is bitten by one of these parasites. After being bitten, her body begins to exhibit symptoms such as bleeding from the eyes and nose, dizziness and vomiting blood. Shortly thereafter, her abdomen expands and finally explodes. It is believed that the toxin injected by the parasites is a more concentrated form of seabed nectar, which explains its deadly properties. Defense Department reports in the film suggest that the parasites prefer to attack in groups and in enclosed spaces, making them a lethal threat to anyone trying to hide from clover. After failing to stop Clover with conventional weapons, the US government implements the Hammer Down Protocol, an extreme measure that involves the total destruction of Manhattan using high-powered bombs. Although the film implies that Clover is finally destroyed, an audio clip at the end of the credits suggests that the creature may still be alive. When this audio is played in reverse, the phrase it's still alive can be heard, leading some fans to theorize that Clover may have survived the attack. However, J.J. Abrams confirmed that the monster dies at the end of the film and that the hammer down protocol was successful in destroying both Clover and its parasites. One of the most debated questions among Cloverfield fans is whether Clover is a native Earth creature or if it comes from another world. Initially, Abrams claimed that Clover was a terrestrial creature, possibly from a prehistoric era. This seemed to fit with the theory that it had been hibernating for thousands of years at the bottom of the ocean, feeding on seabed nectar. However, with the release of the Cloverfield Paradox in 2018, a new theory was introduced that suggests Clover and other creatures like it come from an alternate dimension. In this film, an experiment with a particle accelerator causes a rift in space-time, allowing creatures from another dimension to invade Earth. This has caused much confusion among fans, as it seems to contradict the origin established in the first film. While Abrams has tried to clarify that Clover is still a native Earth creature in the first movie, theories about its multi-dimensional origin remain popular. <laughs> The reality is that, despite its immense size and brutality in attacking New York City, 
Clover is actually just a baby. According to statements from J.J. Abrams himself, the monster we see in the first movie is a very young creature, frightened and disoriented, reacting aggressively purely out of instinct and fear. This adds an interesting and even tragic dimension to Clover's character since the monster does not have a clear purpose of destruction. Rather, it is simply trying to survive in an unfamiliar environment filled with noise, lights, and constant attacks that confuse and scare it. It's as if an animal suddenly found itself in hostile territory, surrounded by threats it doesn't fully understand and from which it cannot escape. The idea of Clover as a baby is reinforced in the sequel, The Cloverfield Paradox, where an adult version of the same species appears. This monster is significantly larger, to the point where its head towers above the clouds, implying a height of several thousand feet. The size difference is shocking, and makes it clear that if a single young specimen was able to cause such chaos in New York, the adult version of the creature represents an entirely new and undoubtedly terrifying level of threat. To conclude this video, we can observe that the Cloverfield monster is a fascinating creation that blends the scale and terror of classic kaijus with a modern approach to storytelling and mystery. Clover is not just a destructive beast, but a creature with complex biology and a hidden backstory that has captured the imagination of fans since its first appearance in 2008. With its combination of colossal strength, extreme resilience, and uncontrollable aggression, Clover represents a terrifying force in monster cinema, standing out for the way its chaotic and destructive presence is portrayed through the found footage format. Although other equally powerful monsters exist in cinema, the visceral and realistic experience offered by Cloverfield gives Clover a unique position in the genre. And while its origin remains the subject of debate, whether as a prehistoric creature awakened by human greed or an extra-dimensional being, one thing is certain. Clover has left an indelible mark on horror and science fiction cinema. The expansion of the Cloverfield universe in later films like 10 Cloverfield Lane and the Cloverfield Paradox has added additional layers of complexity to the story. And with rumors of a possible direct sequel to the 2008 film, it is likely that Clover's legacy will continue to grow. Whether you prefer to believe in its terrestrial origin or the parallel dimension theory, the Cloverfield monster reminds us of how small and defenseless we can be in the face of the unknown. What do you think? Let me know your opinions in the comments and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe for more. Hey, don't go just yet. If you enjoyed my video, I'd love to recommend another one for you to watch.